This is a video showing the setup for the mechanical resonance using a cart and track system. So this is kind of the punchline ahead of time. Um, this is a set of our resonance curves using a single pass car cart on an aluminum track using the magnetic damping accessory, springs, end stops, IDS track pulley bracket, and the mechanical wave driver, or excuse me, mechanical oscillator. So you can see here at the maximum damping, in which I used one business card for the separation of the surface of the magnets for the magnetic damping, damping accessory, we can see that we get the, the minimum of uh, minimum amplitude at resonance. Uh, but as we start to decrease the magnetic damping on the system, we start to see increases on the maximum amplitude that is collected. So we have a, a graph here of the driving frequency. This is determined by a photo gate that is being uh, broken by the arm on the mechanical oscillator. And the, <coughs> the peak displacement, which is done on a calculation that is determined from the position that's given by the rotary motion sensor. So for this setup, I've used a 550 interface using a passport rotary motion sensor and a photo gate. As I've stated before, the photo gate gives us the driving frequency of the system and the rotary motion sensor, along with the uh, track accessory, allows us to track the position of the cart along the track. Also, the 550 is being used as a signal generator, so that allows us to scan the driving voltages and change the driving frequency of the system. Part of this is we have our calculations here. So you can see that our driving frequency is determined from the angular speed, which is determined from the uh, uh, set up uh, the photo gate, which I'll show momentarily. The DC voltage from the 550 is determined by this calculation. So we're using time as an, uh, to increment the, the voltage over time. You can also change the slew rate by changing this multiplier. So if you want the slew rate to be slower, you'll go ahead and have a, a much lower value for this. I have set a baseline voltage of about 2 volts. Um, if we try to drive the mechanic, uh, rather the uh, mechanical oscillator at a lower voltage, um, the curves are, are not as uh, symmetric. But again, um, I will I will show a run with a, a lower uh, initial driving voltage, and then the peak displacement is given by a calculation that is done on the position that is given to us by the rotary motion sensor. So let me go ahead and uh, now go to the signal generator. So the signal generator is controlled by a calculation, which we've generated. Um, so it's a, a DC voltage. However, the magnitude of that voltage is controlled by our calculation. To make sure that the mechanical oscillator is only running when we're running the experiment, um, I've set the auto button uh, such that the signal, generator, the signal generator only turns on when uh, the record button is placed, is uh, pushed. Um, also, I have a voltage limit of 8 volts on this, as that is the voltage limit on our uh, 550 interface. So let me go ahead and turn off some of these curves here so we can show you the effect of what happens when we turn down the slew rate. So in order to show multiple runs at one time, you can press the rainbow uh, triangle up here. So when it's turned off, uh, you can see that it's only one run that's being displayed. But if we select it again, then we can select multiple runs at one time. In this case, I want to compare the six card damping along with the six cards with the sl slower slew rate. So you can see with the slower slew rate, we have a tighter uh, placement of the samples. The samples are only taken when the arm breaks the beam for the photo gate. So as you have a slower slew rate, you'll have more data points per uh, increase in driving frequency. The next video will show the uh, setup of the track.